<laughs> What's happening, everyone? I'm Adrian. This oh. is Ronald. Oh. <laughs> ah, Ronald. <laughs> What's happening, everyone? I'm Adrian. And I'm Ronald. And welcome back to What, what the, the pun. pun. Hey. Hey. Second, second, second take. take. <laughs> so today we're back at Ronald's. We've not been here for a while, and we're gonna give you an update on. So, yes, Tappy um, are very cheap Mark IV Golf GTI and I think what uh, last time we did a update on the Mark IV I think GTI. It was like February. Yeah, I think video was uploaded Jan 28th. I think. Oh, okay, yeah. Cool. Wow. Is that yeah, it's been, it's been a while. It's oh, been wow. a while. And wow. um, yeah, so we got some good news and we got some bad news. So, shall we go over it? Yes. What would you like to start off with? <laughs> so, how about we start off with some um, good news, Ronald? Cool. So, the good news, the ones you've been waiting for all this time, is that Tappy has passed its MOT. <laughs> Finally. Yeah. Finally. <laughs> it's a long time coming. <laughs> so, we ended the video Jan 28th, where you, you basically, you've, you fixed the, the clutch, like, when we had the car, it wasn't going into gear. Yeah. Uh, then you started on the wing. Yeah. And then it was just basically, we, you know, you was before at the time it was ready for its MOT. So it failed. It did fail. It did fail. Well, quite a few yeah. things, but thankfully, it wasn't any of the things that I did wrong. It was mm -hmm. just the things that I didn't check over or wasn't aware okay. of as part of the MOT. Yeah. So I will share some screenshots of the two failures, one in Feb and the other in April, either here or here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, yeah. And that was, and that the two failures, or the failure in the past was actually on the same day. Because yeah. they, they overlooked something and then, yeah. Well, would, would you care to, I don't know, share your the MOT journey basically from from where we left off and then what you had to go through to to get you know past its MOT because it, it obviously failed hugely in Feb and then failed again in April but then it passed literally the same day as well yeah so the biggest issues with the car was in three key areas one was the headlight aim mm. the other one was the incorrect front springs one spring was at this height, one spring was at that height. So the front, the rears were fine, the front was that. So it was almost like you were like low rider. It was the most weirdest <laughs> thing ever. I've never seen it before. Um, and the thing is, we, we never noticed it when, like, at all. I mean, I noticed that they were different color. Yeah. One was red, yeah, one was. Color was different, yellow, but it just but didn't really pick up on the, the height. The height, yeah. yeah. But obviously, that would have, when you do the headlight aim test, which has to pass for safety reasons, it just flagged up straight away. Uh, so then I ordered, um, so I got some new springs, new sack springs, put those on. Um, the headlight was still a little bit off because when the previous owners had changed the bulb, they'd messed around with the, um, the reflector part. So it was always making the, the light point in a different direction. Um, and there's a test that you can do to kind of see it against um, a concrete wall at night time to see the height. And oh my God, that, because every time you have to make any adjustment to the headlight, the bumper has to come off. Oh. Every single time, because of the way they way they make it. So okay. we did eventually get it working. We did some quick little test drives up and down my little road. Took it to the MOT. Eventually, it did pass. I was very elated. <laughs> and here's where we are. So yes, eventually, Tappy did eventually become road legal, and that's the best part of this whole journey because it took. Well, it took a while to get this car ready. Seven, seven, on and off, seven months. Yes. Which is not actually that bad if you, okay. if you think about it. Seven months. Because I, I, we did have um, Temper T as well, mm -hmm. which had a complete rebuild during that time. 
plus I had work to do on my golf um, I'm on my golf on my Z3 in here and there so actually yeah it wasn't and also fitting it around work oh, and, yeah, and luckily we had lockdown 25 lockdowns yeah that was <laughs> so right. that that it's gave really us cool. time to get cracking I guess yeah man okay so with the with the MOT out of the way now what's next so how about we show you you ready Ronald we're gonna do this the 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 magic of editing cool so let's do it one two three Ronald whoa whoa my knees weren't ready for that <laughs> <laughs> so okay Ronald hi this does not look MOT ready. This, I mean, no. It, well, yeah, it may, it may, it, it, buff, yeah. it may have an MOT, but yeah. it doesn't quite look like it's uh, road legal anymore. So, would you care to tell us, tell the, everyone, like, what's actually happened here? Gladly. Right. <laughs> okay. So, here's the backstory. So, following from the MOT that same day, mm. my wife and I decided to take a drive in my newly repaired car. Um, and I live in Stevenage, which is about 30 miles from London. Um, and we went to go up to um, just get a drink, just go to a uh, petrol station. It was along the A1. So it was about 20 miles from home. And then we got our drinks and then we was driving back. And then all of a sudden, the car wouldn't go into gear. It kept revving really hard, right, as I'm trying to change gear. Now this A1, this is, on, this is like national speed limit stuff. So I had, we had traffic coming and everything. Then I pulled into a, a little side road and was trying to check it out and I was like, I can smell like a burning smell. Um, and I was like, <sighs> clutch slipping. Now, here's where the story is a bit interesting, pun, right? Because, no, no, don't laugh, honestly. Because, because the car hasn't been driven that often, obviously whilst it was off the road because I can't actually do that, the clutch issue was already there from the very beginning. And actually, from following on from like diagnosis, that was actually the actual reason why the gears wasn't going in. That was a real reason. Oh. Yeah. It was a combination of the gear linkage also not going into play because somebody was messing around with the with the gearbox. That's why they snapped off um, that little switch thing. But other than that, it was actually the clutch was slipping, but you wouldn't have known it unless you'd driven it for longer than about ten miles. The car had never done more than about 10 miles from when we got it because it got delivered here to get an MOT. And obviously in the MOT, I'm only going two miles down the road and back. And I remember there was these like weird times where I would put it into gear and it would kind of rev suddenly. But because my knowledge of mechanics is not as bad than it is now, hmm. I was able to figure out, okay, cool, that's the, that's the issue. So yeah, so at a clutch slip issue, we limped back to Stevenage very scary actually because I had my wife in the car with me I had this big articulate lorry behind us as well oh, wow. I had um, hazards on pretty much most of the way it was it was mad right so when I got home I was like that's it I'm done I'm done the car was a good project but a lot of money and time has been put into it taking away time from other projects that should have been started by now okay yeah so um, yeah i said you know what it's i mean we'll go do you want to know the cost why not i why mean not? It, it's safe to say right, this so, car is cursed it is the curse of tappy it it's uh it's a money pit yeah and uh, i think you know the the the, the best option uh, would be to walk away and uh, accept our losses. Yep, and also I... accept that it was a big learning experience as well. Yeah. I've learned, I've learned about bodywork. I've learned about changing springs, shocks. I've learned about um, getting an engine to run smooth. I've learned about fitting an exhaust. I've learned so much about this car, and really that was the whole reason why we bought this car. But the added benefit was to be the car will eventually run around, we'll take it to the Nürburgring, we'll crash it into a ditch, and I'll leave it on the Nordschleife, and I'll be like, see you later, I'm going home, bye. Yeah, that was a real idea. You're, you're not going to crash the TT though? No. Okay. Good. Cool. Got an update <laughs> on that, actually. Oh. Stay tuned. Make sure you like and subscribe. One future video, you'll find out about how to have oh. um, TPT's going on. Thank you, Ronald. You're welcome. <laughs> so, plug in there. So, um, um, yeah, just, just wanted to point out, 
we're missing an engine here, so my my arm is right through this right now. Yeah, so let me lift this up for you guys so you can see. So yes, no engine. Now, the so, fortunate thing with cars, right, yes, is that what are we doing with this, by the way? Why is the engine missing? The engine is missing because we're just we're we're breaking the car down, and I'm selling all the bits. A the bits that bought and paid for and is fitted to this car will get resold, and then all the bits that came with the car that can be salvageable, like pipes and wiring looms and power steering pumps, things like that, all of that stuff um, gets sold off separately because there's still a big, big, big market for this, for cars like this. Yeah, I'd say yeah? so. I mean, we- It's we, worth more as it in broken down than it is actually we, driving we, on the road. We picked up the, the wheels and the boot off, uh, well, off the used market. Exactly. Yeah. So yeah, that is that is now the plan. Look, we've got a little grasshopper in there. Hello, grasshopper. You right, mate. You right. <laughs> don't get crushed there. Yeah? Don't get crushed. Yeah, try, try not to crush. Feel like you're gonna get crushed. Yes. Yeah, yeah, move on. Oh, there you go. Oops. Oh. Your 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 boots uh, misaligned, Ronald. Yeah, probably another MOT <laughs> failure for that one. Um, I'd love to show you what's going on inside because it's jokes. All right. Well, I'll bring a camera along. Yes. And let's have a look. But so far, like in terms of expenses, how much do we? Buy this car for like 600? Bought the car for 578. 578? No, 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 no. Yeah, including deliveries, 536. 536 including delivery. 536 and then what's the other, the total spend? Total spend was 1428 pounds and 56 pence. And in comparison to Temper T, the yeah. Audi TT, we spent less on the Audi TT. We right? spent more on the car, on the but less on actually fixing yeah. it. Money pit. <laughs> yeah. Um, this. Yeah. T a temper T comes in at about uh, 150 pounds cheaper to get it to a position where I've been able to drive it versus this car. This is part of the part and parcel of of car projects. We've not done it ever before. This is the first time we've boxed yeah. it. We we'll absolutely will do it again because we've now learned so much more about how to find the right car. Was this the right first project car? Probably not. It, but we didn't know. We bought we sold we bought it sold unseen. We didn't actually get a chance. To, well, we saw it in person, but by yeah. then we'd already committed that we're going to buy it. Uh, it's it's just because the, the price was so attractive. To be fair, yeah. like you know, set, sent a low ball offer. They accepted. It's like whoa, we got a cheap project going on, Ronald. Yeah. Exciting. You know, it was it was we we're in lockdown. There's not a lot to do. For you know, hey, let's why not just fix the car whilst we're in lockdown. Yeah. And. And to be fair, in hindsight, if if we was able to diagnose the slipping clutch sooner, yes, it would have changed the, the, the trajectory. trajectory of the project to be like, okay, are we going to just put a new clutch in or not? But then we wouldn't have realised that there was other things that would have eventually failed the MOT. I mean, the exhaust wasn't, wouldn't have been a big deal, but the springs, the brakes, the parking brake, there would have still been a £600 worth of parts needed because yeah. if the gearbox had issues, that would also have to have been changed. Clutch isn't exactly cheap. So yeah, all yeah. in all, I'm happy with the experience. I have had many a tiresome night. I have many an empty wallet from all the parts <laughs> that have to be buy, but it's okay, I'm not even that stressed. It's a good learning experience. Yeah. It is a bit sad that being, you know, the so first nice. project, first project, you know, you'd want to see through the first project, but mm -hmm. we learned so much from this first project that I don't think would, repeat those problems with future ones anyways. Yeah, I'm glad I had yeah. the TT to be a success, to make me believe that I can I can actually do this in, in my own time and we can turn around projects. Because it, like, it was like a running joke at work, innit? Like, <laughs> are your cars getting on, mate? Are you finished it? And I'm like, uh, <laughs> yes. But not all of them, <laughs> even my neighbors also. Um, yeah, so it's all good, it's all good. All right, so how about have a quick look in, on the inside. So it's got a bit chilly out here. So let me show you what's going on. So what I've had, what I've taken off thus far, you know, you, you changed the rear calipers. Yeah. Yeah. So change the rear <laughs> calipers. Well, you should know you bought them. Um, oh yeah, yeah, I yeah. Did. So I can only because the car still needs to be rolling so it can be salvaged. Um, I got one of them off, and then I realised that there's not really much resale because it was a 
cheap oh yeah it was a cheap um aftermarket eBay one thing, ebay yeah. one so it's not so i just left one of them on yeah not that i can stop the car because obviously the brake fluid is not even there but anyways um yeah so check this out all right why is there water in the car you haven't seen this yet oh shit. Look, there's actually literally water in the car uh where is that coming from? I have no idea where it is coming from. It doesn't have a sunroof. The only thing I can think of is that the leaves are backed up in the blower motor and it's coming through there. Oh, it rains. Jeez. Yeah. Magical. Oh. Cursed. 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 Stupid <laughs> car. Uh. Right. So go on, go on. Get get more deeper in there so you can see. So, um. <sighs> Because a lot of these things here are actually like broken or cracked, there's not yeah. really that much of a... There's not so as much things as you think of that could be salvaged. What about these seats? No, so the seats are quite soiled, they keep they got they get mouldy and stuff. Okay. Like I was thinking of doing the seats, but then also they take up a lot of space in the garage versus what it cost to get rid of them, time and stuff. Um I, I will I need to get the lights out. Okay. Lights out, uh, windscreen motor, the front, ECU, wiring loom, mm -hmm. rear bumper. Okay. Um, these things, because that's why the bumper's there. Front bumper as well. That's okay. There. Um, I would like to have got the wheels to be paid for, but I need some. I need it to be on something to roll it onto mm -hmm. the the bed. Okay. Um, but I'll ask the salvagers, like, how does that work? Like, once it's on the bed, can I just like, or do I have to like follow them and then take them off and then? I don't know. Um. The door I was going to keep, but then the door got rusted, so, yeah, well, but it was bought like that, rusted, yeah. so I was like, leave it. The speaker, you mentioned, um, the speakers were aftermarket, but they got corroded over time. Okay. So not actually that great quality either. Um, what we have, what I have salvaged, I've got all the parts that I've bought, bar this, because that was the, the precious um, window that we took ages to obtain, um, which I'm going to try and somehow Get that off. I don't know how I'm gonna do it. Uh, wing mirrors. Wing mirrors. Wing mirrors. Yeah, I don't think it's worth it. No. No. Pretty effort. Maybe not worth it. Yeah. yeah, and that's the other thing as well. It's when you're um, breaking down a car, you also got to think about the effort. Like, how long is it gonna take you to? Like, for example, those brakes took way longer than it should have to take one off. And I was like, it's not really worth the hassle. But um, like the exhaust section, pretty much all of the exhaust up till the cap, that's out. Um, wiring loom is going to come out. Engine, there's so much stuff off this engine that can be reused for other builds. I'm not a really a fan of just throwing something to a landfill. I like to salvage as much as possible. So you got a fair, okay. got a fair bit. Okay. Got a fair bit. Cool. Will we, will we break even? Absolutely not. But at least we'll get some of it back, and then we can roll that into another project, and hopefully that project can yield the profit back. That's the way I'm thinking of it. All right. Thank you, Ronald. Cool. Yeah. So, okay. That so is the story. that is it. That is uh, so that is the bad news. So bye bye, Tappy. You'll be going off to a better place. Maybe I don't know. I don't care. Um, hopefully um, recycled and um, making a change to the environment. Hopefully in a good way. Yes. <laughs> yes. Panos is very much a believer of restoring older cars and giving them some more life. Hence mm -hmm. why I have a twenty. 22 year old BMW Z3 okay. and it's still running on the road <laughs> one of like 47 in the whole entire country that's still actually running that's crazy when you think about it <laughs> <laughs> so that is all for this week uh, hopefully next time I catch up with you we'll have some uh, very exciting news but can't tell you now lip sealed lip sealed uh, so if you want to know what's happening make sure you are subscribed click on that notification bell as well so for this week that is all take care see you all bye bye see you later